Hi, welcome to this Oracle Visual Builder Studio Overview. My name is Shai Schmelzer. In this quick overview, we'll cover the key functionality provided by Oracle Visual Builder Studio. This includes an issue tracking system, agile dashboard for planning, development sprint execution and tracking, code version management and peer code review, build and test automation for various languages, and continuous deployments of artifacts to your environments. We'll start in the project view of Visual Builder Studio. What we see here is the recent activity in our project, including all the activities that our team member created. The last activity that we see here is an automated test that has failed. Let's click and see what exactly happened. We can go and look at the test results over here. This is a JUnit test, and we can see the exact error that happened when we got the wrong hello message over here. We're going to see how to fix this issue. But before we go there, we'll show you another part of our testing capabilities, which includes detecting vulnerabilities in third-party libraries. Our dependency analyzer can review your project for the libraries that are being used and identify any libraries that have non-vulnerabilities in them. Over here, we can see the various libraries that have issues and the various issues where we can drill down all the way to see the exact information reported in known vulnerability databases. Visual Builder Studio can also help you resolve the issue by identifying versions of the libraries that have the issue fixed in them. We're going to fix this later on. For now, we're just going to focus on the failed test with the error in the message that we got there. We're going to document the issue we ran into in our issue tracking system. This is a place where we can track all our to-do. Over here, we're going to create a new issue in our system, reporting the test failure. And then we can indicate what type of issue this is, whether this is a defect, a feature, a task, or if we work with agile methodology, this can be epics and stories in those. We can choose severity, priority, and we can also choose from customized lists, such as the component of our project where this issue is at, and also the owner for the issue from our team members. We can indicate when do we need to fix this issue by, estimate how long it's going to take, or even provide agile complexity points over here to indicate how complex the issue is for resolving. Once we created this issue 101 in our system, it's going to be part of our backlog. Let's go into our board view where we can look at our backlog and define a new development sprint that we're going to start today. We'll give a name to the sprint and indicate how many points of complexities we aim to solve in this development sprint. Then we can simply shuttle items from our backlog into the current sprint. Now that we have the set of issues that we are aiming to resolve, let's start our development sprint. You can, of course, customize the length of the sprint that we're executing over here. By default, it's two weeks. And over here in our Scrum board, we can see exactly who is responsible for what and what is the status of each one of the tasks that are in our to-do list. There are a bunch of other reports that you can get about the project progress. Now let's switch over to see the view of the developer. The developer works in the same project as the project manager and can see all the things that happened in the same activity stream. He can see an issue that has been assigned to him going into the issue system and looking at assigned to me, for example. He can also get emails about issues that are assigned to him. He can then go into the issue, read all the information, update the issue, and provides additional comments, attachment, or anything else that has to do with actually resolving the issue. Now let's go to our source. Our source is hosted in a private Git repository over here. And in this Git repository, we can create new branches for our code. We'll create branch 101 to fix the issue that was reported as issue 101. Now we go into the code itself, into the branch, and we can look up and search across our code for specific strings. For example, in this case, we have an issue with the hello world method and message. We're going to locate the problematic file over here, and we're going to click on the file to edit it. 
You can, of course, check out the code into your own preferred IDE and work there. Over here, I'm going to make an easy, simple change directly from the browser and then commit the code into my branch. I'm going to provide a meaningful message explaining what I fixed and which issue this relates to. This would allow me later on to click and associate the issue with a specific commit. We committed the code into our branch, and now we want to merge the code into our master branch. To do this, we're going to create a new merge request. Merge request allows me to request other people to review the code before we merge it into our main line of code. So in this case, we're targeting merging into master from branch 101. The issue and the commit is automatically identified. We can link to the specific issue that this commit is supposed to resolve. We can have related builds that would be executed as part of our review, and we can have specific people that are going to review our code. Again, those are all people from our specific project team. Let's create a merge request. This is going to send emails to everyone who is responsible or part of this merge request. We're going to switch over to the view of Jeff and look at his view of the merge request that was submitted. When he clicks into the merge request, he can see the exact text I wrote to him as a developer. He can see exactly the issue and also the changes that we've done in the code. He can even comment on those changes and we can have iterative process of peer code review where we get comments and we fix issues and continue to do this process. Once everyone is happy, we can click to approve those changes and then we can merge the changes back from our branch into the main line of code. And we can even delete the specific branch and mark the issue as resolved. Now that we made the changes into the master branch, you can see a job has been queued for us for execution. This is the test job. This is the job that actually runs tests on our code. Let's look at the configuration of this job. It's connected to our Git repository, to the master branch, and is automatically invoked each time this code is changed in our master branch. Then it's going to execute our dependency vulnerability analyzer, checking our code to see if there are libraries with issue. We could have chosen to fail the build and report an issue in our issue tracking if we find issues. Then we're doing a step here for executing a Maven test step to basically run our test. The build process supports multiple build frameworks such as Ant, Gradle, Maven, as well as various utilities for Docker, ProjectFN, Node.js, the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, SQL, Visual Application, and many other types of steps. We can see our build is executing right now. And our build is actually part of a complete pipeline of steps. Once we run the test, we're going to split it into two steps. One would deploy our Docker image to the Oracle Docker registry, and the other one would deploy the image to Docker Hub. Then we're going to merge back and create a jar file and deploy our Docker image into a specific instance. As you can see, we can see the builds executing live. We can click on the pipeline and see the progress of the pipeline as it happens. Jobs that succeed are colored green. We can also see the complete log for our pipeline as it progresses, as well as go into specific build jobs and see the results over there. For example, if we go into the test, we can see that now the test passed successfully. We can now see the two Docker publishing steps happening. Let's click on the Docker Hub step to show you the steps that we're doing here. Again, we're picking the code from the same Git repository and then executing a Docker login, Docker build, and Docker push operations to take our code package it as a Docker image and publish it in this case to Docker Hub, but as we saw, it can also be to other Docker repositories, including the Oracle one. Once the job succeeded, we can go over, for example, into Docker Hub and look up our Docker images. 
and we'll see the image we just pushed a couple of seconds ago appearing at the top over here. The next step in our pipeline is taking our code from the Git repository and creating a jar file. Let's look at this build job. Again, working from the same Git repository and the same branch, we're going to do a package step using the Maven build framework and then take the jar artifact and store it inside our Maven repository. This would allow other people to use that jar file and deploy it to multiple locations. Maven and NPM are two types of repositories that are part of Visual Builder Studio. All right, this job just finished now, which means that the next step would be the deployment. We can actually go and see our deployed application and see if the message now is hello there versus hello that was there before. And it did its hello the world, the reason that our test succeeded and our code is deployed to our environment. This full process of development is tracked from one central location in Visual Builder Studio. From our recent activities, we can see the full development flow from identifying an issue using an automated test, reporting the issue in our issue tracking system, the issue being picked up by one of our developers, branching the code, creating code fixes, going through code review process, getting the code approved, merging it into the main line of code, which then fires up a set of build steps that take the code, test it, publish it, deploy it, and create jar files in our Maven repository, resulting in the issue being resolved, which is trackable through our Agile dashboard. This is the full complete integrated development experience of Visual Builder Studio.